Hey, what's up everybody? It's Joe Garcia back with another video for YouTube. Uh, just going to show you today how I set up uh, Duo security authentication, uh, two-factor authentication uh, up on my PVWA as an authentication method. Uh, just a quick overview of how to do that and then also we'll do a quick test in the uh, Rust API for CyberArk to show how we can utilize uh, multi-factor authentication over the Rust API. Now, um, the challenge response method works best with human users obviously because we can ask for their uh, token code from their 2FA app, their Duo app on their phone or however they're doing that and then we can send it across the wire that way. Uh, otherwise, we would need to um, depend on a push method being the default method uh, for that alert and notification and approval. All right, so let's get to it. Um, right now, I'm on my PVWA, and you can see I've got Duo set up here already uh, with through Radius. So um, the way we're going to set it up, it kind of serves as a Radius server as well. I'm on version 10.5, which, which is our latest version at the time of this video. Um, so here is my components box where I started off first, and I installed a, uh, a tool um, called Duo Authentication Proxy. So let me log in here real quick. And you can get this through Duo's website. Um, it's a rather short URL, so it's easy to type in if you can't copy and paste it into your VM uh, like I cannot. However, when it installs, it's just a service. So I guess if I run services here, .msc, we can take a look at it. It's Duo Security Authentication. It's running right now. And this is based off of a, uh, a configuration file. So if I pull up this configuration file here and browse to it quickly, um, it's actually going to be in uh, the Duo Security Authentication Proxy uh, folder and program files. And then there's a conf folder in there. And so we've got our off proxy configuration. Um, I added my AD client, so it'll prompt me first for LDAP username and password. I have to provide that, and then it will ask for my second factor, uh, which will be my Duo security token code. Um, so here I have my host set up. I've got my service account username set up. That's uh, my bind for uh, Active Directory. I've protected uh, the service account password, and then I'm just going to, you know, accept any user that's within my domain uh, for the uh, search DN. And then down here is uh, my Radius server information. I got this from logging into uh, Duo Security, uh, creating my own organization, and you get some free uh, applications and things like that. So I created an application in here uh, called CyberArk Privileged Account Security, LDAP Radius. And then when you do that, you get an integration key, a secret key, and an API host name. So with this information, that's what we're going to be setting in here uh, in order for it to um, be able to communicate back here. So that's what I've got listed here. The I key is the integration key, our secret key, but in the protected namespace because I went ahead and protected it. Uh, there's documentation on Duo's website on how to do that. Uh, only works for Windows-based uh, instances, though. You can't do it for anything Nix-related. Um, my API host, my Radius IP, which is going to be the IP address for my Vault server, so that is there. Um, this is the IP up here for my domain controller under AD client. This is going to be for the vault server. And then my radius secret that I've gone ahead and protected as well. Um, so that will have to be given as well from the vault server, which we'll talk about here in a second. The client is going to be the AD client um, so that it asks for that LDAP information for uh, first. And then also uh, the port is established here too. And you can check really quickly just by net starting the service to see if it works. It'll create a log folder here. And then you'll see in here that there are no errors. And um, actually, if we were to go, oh, that's too far down, uh, just to where I was like net starting it in the beginning, it would look something like this. Uh, and then the init would uh, finish successfully. So that is what you're going to be looking for. There's only going to be a couple things in here when you do it. So you can see that started up successfully. It didn't complain. Anywho, 
Uh, that's the setup for uh, Duo Authentication Proxy. That actually acts as a Radius server as well. So we'll be using that, targeting that. And then um, let's move over to the Vault now. So after we get that set up, we have to actually do some stuff here on the Vault. So let me log in as the administrator. This is off domain now, remember, okay? And now over here, what we need to do is change the dbparm file a little bit to give it the radius information. But first, uh, there's also a, another file, a radius auth.dat file here um, that you'll want to read the CyberArk documentation for. Um, and you have to provide it some values that it will then go ahead and encrypt in here for the radius authentication information. That's how we protect the radius secret. But if we go back to the conf uh, folder where these are held now in version 10.5 and going forward, I made a copy of my dbparm file here just to make sure that I had it saved and then edited this one. And at the very bottom of the main namespace here, uh, I added a line, radius servers info down here. And this is going to give uh, four different values. It's going to give the radius server IP address. That's where we installed the duo security authentication proxy. 1812 is the port that we're going to be uh, listening on. We've got 192.168.3.101, which is my vault server's IP address. It's the same IP address for the radius server um, in that authentication configuration that we did for Duo. And then finally, we need to point it to that radius secret file that we protected, and that's going to be stored in radius auth.dat at the root of the installation folder, not in here with this INI file. Okay, so after we do that, we save that down. You're gonna to wanna to make that change. Uh, we're gonna to have to restart the private arc server in order for that change to take. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it again in my lab, but you'll wanna do that um, when you make any changes to dbparm so that they refresh and get taken. Uh, it will spit back any errors if it has any issues with, uh, you know, um, talking to uh, Radius when it turns back on, things like that. Uh, if your user is having issues getting through the PVWA, it'll also report like the Radius reply in the private arc server here um, based on what it sees for the user and stuff. So if I happen to try to log in through Radius with a user that isn't configured to here, if I use Radius and then maybe let's try to come in as Mike, one of my vault administrators, it'll error out. And then we should be able to see that user uh, error over back here on the vault. So you can see the radius authentication is not allowed for that user. I would need to enable it in private art client with this error. And even if it was uh, added in there, he's still not a user in Duo security for me. So it would still be an issue. All right. So with that all explained, we've got... Uh, We've got our vault set up and running. We've got Duo Security off running. We do need to log in as a vault administrator. Um, so I'm gonna log in using LDAP instead as myself because we need to turn on and enable the radius authentication. Um, I already have it enabled, obviously, as you saw from the beginning. But if you don't have it enabled, and you don't show it in your PVWA, it's gonna be under options and you're going to expand out the authentication methods and you'll see it there you just need to flip over enabled from no to yes and then i'd give it a, a pretty display name too otherwise it'll just be the id which would be a lowercase radius not pretty not pleasing to the eye um, so uh, that's going to be how you turn on the radius authentication and then finally the final piece of the puzzle you need to make sure that you have that user set up um, and ready to go in uh, Duo security side of the house to make sure that they can authenticate through. And I'm gonna bounce back to the V10 UI. I use the V9 on my daily uh, so that I can upload SSH keys, things like that. Um, however, uh, in here, there is a user section. So you can click there, create a user. I've got Duo user we're gonna be using. It's tied to me, tied to my phone. Um, so I had my phone volume on uh, but I got a text message, so that was that noise you heard earlier, but now I've got it back on so you can hear the 2FA push through when we start testing it. So with all of that done, we can test it right here now. Um, I'll log in as Duo user with the Duo user 
name and then also the LDAP password and then I should get prompted uh, through push notification so there's that that's that we'll go ahead and approve this use my little thumbprint there and that should grant us access so we've got the duo security set up running successfully that's good duo user can pop in let's sign out now and instead of using this let's open up postman and let's uh, let's try it out in postman using the rest API so I've got the version 10.5 REST API out public on, uh, on Postman's uh, documentation website, uh, cybr.rocks forward slash REST API v105, just like you see it down at the bottom of your screen. Um, so I'm going to be using that. Uh, I pulled the collection in already. Uh, so I'm going to be using it straight out of here. I, oh, it looks like I've got a couple things up already. So radius authentication we are going to want to do. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, make sure that we've got the proper username and password set up in the template here. So I'm going to be pointing to my PVWA, cyberarcdemo.com. That's what I'm working with up here. Uh, and my API username is going to be duo user. And then the API password is going to be the, the LDAP password for that user. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and send this across. We should get a response back um, through my phone, a push notification. And then once I approve that, we'll get the actual token back that we can use in the authorization header. So I'm going to send it across. Oh, you know what? This is something that happens with the REST API sometimes. It'll say no session instance was found for it. Um, but what I found that you can do is just do a uh, quick LDAP authentication instead using the same account credentials and because it's set up for radius authentication um, I, I feel like it's going to end the session properly because even if I tried to log off which I did initially it wouldn't actually close that session and the session instance would still be there so let me send this real quick we'll get the error back but now I can send this one across again and we won't get this session instance error so there you go. You hear the push notification come through. I'm approving it right now, giving it my fingerprint, and there's my token. So I can now lift this, copy what's between the quotes, come up here, edit my CyberArk logon result, and then now I'm good to go. I can open up accounts under current, get my accounts, just send it blank, and it's not finding any accounts for this user. And that's good because this doer user doesn't have any accounts assigned to it. But that's all right. So let's go ahead and log off now. Okay, so that logged me off of duo user session on the API. So let's go ahead and send the radius authentication back again, do it a second time, and we'll, we'll get that error. Okay, so there's our error again. I'm gonna have to try to log in over LDAP, get an authentication failure. Now this time what I'm gonna do is instead of just logging straight in, I'm going to edit the password. And if we were to take in user input prior to getting to this point, we could just ask the user who's running the script for their token code and they can pull it up in their Duo mobile app like I'm doing right now, expand out that section, uh, get their token code, and then here, uh, just do a comma four six three four three five and then have it set in there so we can send across the api uh, password with the token code already provided and bypass it so i won't get a push notification now watch there we go we just get the token code because i provided the proper uh, 2fa here so that's something that we would need to get user input for though uh, but if you just have a forced policy of just push mode to your phones and stuff and you don't want to deal with it that way um, you have good MDM on your on your mobile phones or whatever the case may be then that's the way to go so we can then take this and pop it over here and update that session token um, and then log off with it again okay so there we go now we logged off so that's how we can do radius authentication with a challenge and a response in the REST API, how I set up duo security authentication on the PVWA, um, and, and basically how I can tie it all together. Now, the one thing that I didn't show you that I probably should is in the private R client. The one thing that we, that we did do was I took my LDAP user, duo user, 
and under administrative tools for users and groups, I have Duo user. I updated him uh, after he got picked up in my uh, users group and changed him from the LDAP authentication to Radius. So that way it'll force Radius. That's how I was getting an authentication failure from the LDAP perspective. But with that, you now too can start to figure out the multi-factor authentication for your identity service if you're not using Duo Security. Or if you're using Duo Security, awesome. You just learned how to do it. So go out there, give it a try. Put in the comments if you have any questions or anything like that. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, otherwise, let me know how it turned out for you. And if you had any good experience or figured out any better ways of dealing with maybe cookies uh, with the REST API and things like that, uh, possibly passing that token across as a cookie here. Uh, different ways that you can do it, uh, but definitely uh, respond in the comments and let us know. All right, thanks, and I'll see you next time.